once you tell your story, you might give others the strength to do so. It's very brave to tell your story. For those who have told their story, it's those that have helped find me because that's how I found the strength. I wasn't ready to deal with my MST and I didn't know what to expect from it. I was terrified. I'm still terrified today. When I started hearing others start telling their stories, when I was in the transitional housing program, there were other survivors. And when they started talking to me, I was like, I'm not alone. And then it was this real openness that I can deal with this. Blue days fill my heart with sorrow. And, a little, and a hope that I, if I did disclose this, if, this, if I let this out, that there would be help. And that was the biggest fear. It's like, I'm gonna be, what, how am I gonna be looked at? And how am I going to be treated? Your assailant got six months in the brig, yes. and what was the rest of the punishment? A dishonorable discharge. A dishonorable discharge. Yeah. That's not enough. It's not enough. Did you enough. feel like it was enough? I didn't, and I, I, I don't feel it was enough, but I, there were so many other things that were taking place. It was a, a whirlwind. Yeah, yeah. That, that was an injustice, but then the treatment afterwards were because I couldn't, I, there were so many things that now all of a sudden my dream of serving my country 20 years was yeah. getting ripped from me. Mm. And so then everything that I had known to be who I was, was gone. I'm standing on an island waving at the shore Will you hear me if I say No more How old were you? I was... 20. I went in at 18, and yeah. then I was assaulted at 19, and then I was discharged in tw at 20. It's just a few months before my 21st birthday. You've been open, and you've shared the fact that your life kind of spiraled for a while. Yes. Um, and it, so the incidences of the drugs and the drinking, oh, that, that happened. So mm -hmm. for a decade, I didn't want to be a sailor. I didn't want to be associated with the term sailor. Number one, I thought I had, I had dishonored the uniform, mm -hmm. and that I couldn't. I, I couldn't take. I had dishonored my family, and I buried it so deep. And then I was just wild and out there. And so for a decade, I didn't know how to, to how to come to grips. 2004, I remember a conversation with my ex, and my ex had said, uh, "I think you should stop drinking." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? You know, I'm mm -hmm. the life of the party." He was mm -hmm. like, "No, when you're drinking, people are laughing at you." not with you. And that hurts me when I see them laughing at you. And that was the lifestyle that I lived, like riding hard, drugs and alcohol, just so I could be liked by people. Mm -hmm. And the wheels fell off. What he wasn't prepared for, what I wasn't prepared for is I did stop drinking. But as soon as I stopped drinking, I was flooded with mm -hmm. nightmares and flooded with memories and flooded with pain and flooded with everything. I couldn't cope with that. And I just would want to pick up a drink and continue on, and I knew what I couldn't, and then I didn't know how to handle it. And I didn't know the word for what I was experiencing. And everyone would look at me, and I would be, I would look fine. Mm -hmm. But inside, I was a void. There was yeah. nothing there. And then my second suicide attempt had happened at that point, and I had a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. And it, it was really fast when that happened. And so I had made a mistake and I had used a credit card and I, you know, shopping, let's, let's shop to, to an, mm -hmm. another addiction yep. to cope for that. And I had to own up for that. Then that was another traumatic experience for me because I'd never really wanted to hurt somebody else. And then having to go into a jail where, oh my God, now I'm right back in the military because I'm back with a room full of guys who are judging me for everything. And that is not the environment I want to be in. And so I ran. I ran from probation. And then I eventually came back to, to Pensacola area and, and I came back in handcuffs. But it was that moment where I say it was my salvation because the state trooper had said, uh, when I was in the back seat, it was like, I'm a veteran too. And you're my brother and I expect more from you. And he was like, I don't know what's going on but I'm gonna pray that you get it together, that you find the answers. I can't believe he said that. Yeah. Wow. And I, and at first he was kind of a hard ass to me, mm -hmm. but when he said that in the back seat, I was like, oh my God, but it was a halo because I had just attempted my third suicide and I did not go through with it. And there was a voice that said, don't do it because I didn't want my brother seeing what I saw when I was in Japan with my friend who had committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And I said, my brother's gonna see the same thing and I don't yeah. want him to see how that affected me. 
And Is that what stopped you? That's what stopped me. What they would have to go through. And then I thought of my friend who lost his fight. And yeah. I was like, oh no, I need to fight for him and for myself. And and, and jail, is, that's going to be my saving grace. All right. Yeah. And then I met a VA rec worker. They were like, what's going on? And I was like, well, I'm in jail. It can't get any worse. <laughs> yeah. So here it is. And what was supposed to be 45 minutes was three hours wow. and 45 minutes. And she just let me get everything out that had been building for over a decade. And afterwards, she was like, have you ever heard of PTSD? And I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't apply to me because I didn't lose any, any limbs. And, right. Um, I hadn't gone to war and experienced what the warriors experienced. Right. That wasn't me. And she was like, no, you're, you're a card-carrying member of the PTSD club. I am so blessed that it's because of people who just saw me as a person. And because of that and the work that they did, I was able to transform my life into where I can now speak about being a rape survivor. I listen to the earth I have found Two kinds of noises that resound Coming from a place known as fear Is this the sound that you 